A new scathing Senate report is putting a spotlight on for-profit youth treatment facilities that may not be offering any treatment at all. The report lays out how taxpayers are funding a system of alleged abuse that's happening inside these facilities meant to provide care to troubled teens across our country and right here in our backyard. WAFF 48 Savannah Sapp joins me now in studio. Savannah, this report points to some ugly accusations of these facilities close to home. Margo, the bottom line here is the committee believes companies overseeing juvenile treatment programs are prioritizing profits over the safety of children. The 130 page report names companies like Arcadia and Vivant Behavioral Health, the parent company of Brighter Path in Cortland. I spoke to a, an attorney who was at that hearing today listening to survivors of these so called warehouses of neglect. Sexual, physical, and verbal abuse, improper restraint and seclusion on young children, unsafe and unsanitary conditions, and even a total lack of provision of behavioral health care. Those are the findings outlined in Warehouses of Neglect, a 130 page investigative report by the Senate Finance Committee into juvenile and residential treatment facilities across the country. Alabama attorney Tommy James was present on Capitol Hill to hear those findings himself. What the report revealed today was systematic taxpayer funded child abuse and neglect in these youth residential facilities in Alabama and all across the nation. The report names for profit companies like Universal Health Services and Vivant Behavioral Care, the parent company of Brighter Path in Cortland. The report claims the entities are profiting off residents by billing Medicaid and government agencies while simultaneously facilitating abuse, neglect, and providing subpar education. Profit, 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 and that dwarfs all. And these kids, their future and what is going on and happening to them in these places, that's what needs to be addressed right now. Just this past month, Brighter Path was cited for safety code violations after padlocking doors to keep children inside, while also facing multiple lawsuits with claims of physical, sexual, and verbal abuse for the children who should be receiving care. James is currently representing three former Brighter Path children. It's, it's sad because it does confirm everything that I've seen um, happening over the last 10 to 15 years in these facilities. and. Finally, it's time, and I believe it's finally happening for solutions. Well, this kind of report will likely result in legislation with one senator promising to tighten oversight on these facilities that pull millions of dollars in government funding. Margo. All right. Thank you, Savannah. Stay on it. Well, we're